All right, let's get this thing started. Howdy, everybody. Welcome back. I am Bormithrax. This is Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, and we are continuing. Continuing, continuing, continuing. <laughs> Many continuings in this one. Our uh, Pyromaniac Calvinist run with the Magiclism mod. So we're up to Roland the Eighth. We had a rough evening on uh, on Monday. Yeah, we rolled through a few. So, we're up to rolling the 8th, and um, yeah, it's day 2. We've got a pretty good start this time around, but we've had a few of those, and things have gone horribly, horribly wrong. So, we'll see how we can continue this one, but uh, we're, we're in a really good spot, considering day 2. So, I'll, I'll kind of go over that for anybody that missed uh, Monday's adventure. And, uh, yeah, so, Pyromaniac Calvinist, we are using the Magiclism mod. The goal of this series is to... Use, abuse, find the issues with the Magiclism mod. Give feedback to Corgent and uh, Afternoon on the mod, the spells, the balance, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's what we're going to focus on. And we're not going to do a lot of crafting. So you don't see much in the way of skills here. And that's going to stay that way for the most part. So we'll, we'll incidentally level up a few things. And I might have to grab a couple of levels here or there. But we're not going to just cram our way through a whole crap load of uh, books and uh, become super geniuses and jack-of-all-trades. So one of the things preventing that is the savant trait. So that basically cuts anything except for your highest level skill to half experience. So it really, really slows down everything. Um, but I think I can do it. So we're going to try to really, really leverage our magic use, some gunfire, and just my knowledge of the game to see if we can manage to survive and thrive uh, without going the traditional route so yeah we'll see uh stats wise 8 8 13 9 so high intelligence um crazy amount of encumbrance i'll have to re re, -re take a look at my gear here pretty quick um i got some ideas about that uh good old base move cost that's that's pretty funny <laughs> that's a big number um yeah that's a really big number so, yeah, trait-wise, Savant, like I mentioned, Pyromaniac, Lightweight, Heavy Sleeper, Fast Metabolism, and Addictive. On the positive side, really, just the mana traits. Greater mana efficiency, regen, and lesser mana, lesser mana sensitivity. And we have learned three different schools of magic. We are Biomancer, Kelvinist, and Magus so far. We've picked up a couple of spell books, our starting one and one other one that was really useful. There have been changes. More changes. So I have updated my experimental every single evening of this particular challenge. Um, just constant changes that Korg and Afternoon are doing to the Magiclism stuff. So I've wanted to keep, keep keeping up to date with that. Plus there's been some major, major fixes, changes, and so on to the general game. So let's talk a little bit about that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so if you use the settings command, you'll notice that we're up to build 9226. There's 9226 as of just a couple hours ago. Um, it's the most recent one I can get to for the, uh, the launcher. And, uh, yeah, there's been some big stuff dropped in the last few days. Here's the biggest one I want to talk about, right? Oops, not that one. Right there. That one right there. Here, let's, uh... Let's zoom that out a bit. <laughs> By the way, if you don't know how to do that, uh, hold control and use your mouse wheel and you can make text bigger or smaller. Works in Windows, works in lots of things. So, yeah, let's let's make that bigger. There you go. Reduce healing rate to realistic speeds. Oh my gosh, there is so much gnashing of teeth about this. <laughs> now, for me, no big deal. I play that way all the time anyway. So, I'm a big proponent of having really, really reduced speeds for healing. I, this will be the first time I've actually used it. I've seen the messages. I've followed the, uh, the the PR chatter and so on. I know the reasons behind it. I know there are processes still coming that are going to be based off of this kind of a change. So don't all freak out. Don't get all crazy about it. Yes, it's going to wreck certain play styles. It's part of the whole balance change towards more survival slash realism based gameplay. So... You really shouldn't be able to run out there and just pound tough zombies and hulks and brutes and so on into the dirt with your bare fists and go take a two-hour nap and be back to full health again. So, <laughs> it's not going to go away. Don't expect that. All the big wigs, all the movers and shakers were involved in the discussions for this and uh, the implementation. So while it might get a little bit of fiddling here and there, this is pretty much the way it's going to be. So, get used to it. I wouldn't avoid updating or anything like that. 
you'll figure it out. It just takes some adjustments in play style and uh, character balance. And uh, yeah, life goes on. And this will end up being in the next um, stable version. So you're not going to escape this for very long. So get over it. <laughs> Where do you read those discussions? Uh, well, there's the PR. You notice here you can just click on this little link. You click on that, it'll take you right to the PR uh, on the GitHub site, and you can read through all of the chatter and discussions. Plus, there's multiple posts on Reddit for CDDA. Feel free to drop over to the Reddit channel for CDDA, and you can uh, read all the current mm, polite discussion, I guess is what I'll call it. <laughs> reasoned discourse. Yeah, it's reasoned discourse. That's what Reddit is famous for. Reasoned discourse. <laughs> Knowledgeable explanation of one's topic and uh, one's point of view. That's what Reddit's full of. So there you go. That's the first one. He healing rate, realistic speeds. Now what does that actually mean? It means that basically, if you follow my channel, you know I play with uh, imperceptive healer trait quite often. That's the 10% healing rate compared to how it used to be for the healing rate. So that's what I play all the time. I, I like that trait. I liked the balance changes it made to the gameplay for me and so on. This healing rate is even slower than that. <laughs> so I can't even remotely imagine what it's going to be like to play a character with the current healing rates as of this change and taking Imperceptive Healer on top of it. <laughs> it's like a never heal ever mode. <laughs> I might have to try one of those runs just to see how much I can accomplish without ever being able to heal. So we'll see. But yeah, this is a, a vast change. Make no mistake. If you update to uh, 92.19 or newer, this change here, you got to be prepared for. You've got to really, really change your play style if you're used to just running around and uh, beating up all the poor little zombies and then just taking a nap for a few hours and being back to full health. No longer will your health bars be ping-ponging back and forth between... Uh, low to full, low to full with a single evening's heal or a single evening's sleep. So re realize that, prepare for it, use the types of things that I do, avoid fights at all opportunities, um, use ranged attacks, use reach attacks, use throwing attacks, use traps, use everything you can, which in my opinion is the way it should be. You really shouldn't be as a new survivor in a cataclysm, just be running around super punching everything to death. But I believe there is a mod for fast healing, so if you just absolutely can't deal with it or don't want to deal with it, uh, feel free to load up that fast healing mod, and I think it brings things back to closer to what it was. Um, so yeah. Alright, that's enough talk about that, but this will be my first stream or play with the new healing, so I'm going to be also adapting uh, to the changes, and I'm going to be a hell of a lot more cautious because we did not have any healing issues, and now we're going to have that healing thing, so... I'm going to see it immediately with the damage I've got. So I'll have to adjust my playstyle in this particular run. All right, there's a bunch more stuff, but the other ones were... No. Do, do, do. Oh, yeah, translocators are in. Maybe we'll get the chance to check that out. That'll be cool. Oh, yeah, here's another one I wanted to talk about. Martial arts are trained from the manual books. How that process works. Completely different now. It's no longer Matrix style. Read a book for six minutes. I know Kung Fu. That madness is gone. So now you actually have to study the book and train for extended periods of time. I haven't done it yet. There's there's an, a system in place for a little menu that pops up and you have to actually spend time and stamina to uh, train for extended periods of time before you can actually quote unquote master a book. Um, from the way it's talked about in the PR, it seems like it's a not really a band-aid patch. I mean, it's a fairly significant change and update, but there are better systems that have already been thought out and that are, I think, planned for a little bit later implementation if they can figure them out. So that may change again in the future, but just realize you can't just hit the dojo, read a manual for six minutes, and all of a sudden you know Eskrima, you know Dragon Style, none of that stuff. So it's going to take a, a bit of concerted effort. How long? I have no idea. Haven't used it yet. Very rarely get lucky enough to find martial arts books. They're fairly rare to begin with, and in, at half half drop rates that I play with, I hardly ever find any of the damn things. So uh, it's not going to affect me too much. My my preference would be this go away. I would rather ma martial arts books just get kicked out of the game entirely. You either have learned a martial art through extended training prior to the Cataclysm, or you don't get it. 
So make it really make a difference in character creation. Um, I think it's kind of nonsensical that you can, even with this change, train yourself to become a Dragon Master Kung Fu artist uh, just by reading a, a pamphlet and uh, doing some hand-waving for a while. So whatever. That's my personal preference. But it's a fun thing to find in-game. I, I don't dispute that. But um, yeah, I, I just don't think it makes any sense. All right. Uh, what else? There's uh, Stamina Rebalance. Oh, yeah. This is another one. Stamina Rebalance for the one second turns. Take two. Uh, haven't used it yet. Read the PR. I saw what they're trying to do, and uh, just it does change quite a bit. So I'm gonna also be paying very close attention to my stamina, because you guys know me. I'm all about movement, stamina, and uh, when I get into really, really icky situations, I gotta really understand exactly what the consequences of certain actions are gonna be, and I've got a feel for how much I can do with certain amounts of stamina, and that might all be out of out of whack now. So I'll, I'll be paying close attention to my stamina this run as well. I think that was it. There's there's other stuff in here, I'm sure, but uh, healing rebalance, stamina rebalance, and the martial arts stuff are the big ones. All right, <laughs> that's enough talk about that stuff. So back to where we are. We are hanging out in our luxury RV. We found a campground and uh, managed to get the full. Perfect condition luxury RV out of the campground. So we're tooling around in it currently as our temp vehicle. Um, we're at a lab. We were able to get into the lab with some ID cards. Here's our map of the area. We haven't traveled a huge distance, but uh, yeah, that's where we started right up here. I forget which exact building. I don't remember, but we moved to the south. We moved over this way. We fiddled around out here next to the shipwreck. Played tag with some razor claws. Uh, rolled south, campsites, and then that's where we found the luxury RV right there, I believe, at that campground. Switched to that. I think I had a different vehicle. Yeah, I escaped the city in a different vehicle, and then we we swapped out uh, to luxury RV. Um, so yeah, then we kind of drove around the local area. So we found the, uh, the laboratory there. We've got a strange temple right along the road. And that's about it. We kind of rolled up this way a bit. So we're just going to hang out at this lab for a bit. We're in the process of exploring it. We got a few lucky finds that have made it a little easier. We do have a jackhammer, a gas-powered jackhammer. So we have a way to get into the barracks and armories and libraries and so on. Um, we've got just enough weaponry and ammo to take care of most of the soldier zombies and such that we'll find in there. So we're going to continue doing that. But my main focus is on uh, the spellcraft stuff. So I'm going to rely on the guns to get rid of stuff that I don't have the mana for. Um, and we're just going to keep trying to max out our, our mana and our spells. So I need to go back downstairs real quick and grab my spell books. All right, let's, uh, let's get our stamina back. How long is this going to take? Holy crap, is that a change? <laughs> Normally, if I just hold the key down and wait, that stamina bar zips right back up. I think now it's like eight minutes from zero to full, depending on your your stats. So yeah, that's that's quite a bit longer. So I'll have to get used to that. How much is my movement cost? 129, 94 speed. Am I wearing those Heelys still? No, I've got the uh, combat boots, right? Yeah, I've got combat boots. All right. Uh, but I got a ton of encumbrance on my legs. That's not helping. All right, let's run down and get my magic books real quick. I think I got everything else out of here for the most part. Uh, there they are. All right, Treatise on Magical Elements, Pyromancy for Heretics. We're going to leave the rest of this stuff down here for now. Pop back outside. All right, those are the only two magic books that I've got so far, and I know there's been a change, so I wanted to come check it. So it's blue again, meaning there's a spell I can learn. And there we go, Finger Fire Lighter, yay! <laughs> the Pyromancer can light fires. <laughs> yeah, they mentioned the uh, stamina systems, 10,000 versus 1,000 state, plus the Oxygenator CBM, so... As I mentioned, um, if you're curious about this kind of stuff, when you look at these change logs and they show you these links, just click on those and it'll take you right to the PR. Um, eh, that take you to the PR? I'm trying to remember if it takes you to the PR or the change log. Eh, I don't remember, but uh, you can get details that way. So a lot of it's talked about on Reddit as well. 
So, all right. But yeah, we got a finger firelighter now. So the uh, starting spell book for the Pyromancer. Now you can actually start fires. It was kind of funny not being able to have any way to start a fire as a Pyromancer. Um, so there you go. We now have one. Let's go ahead and uh, learn that. We have learned finger firelighter. Let's look at this thing. 16% fail chance at level 0. It has a 10 max level. 65 mana, 2 turns. Spawn 1 Finger Fire Lighter. Alright, I, I don't want to set myself on fire again. Korg, did you figure out on the uh, infinite burning problem? Is that part of the one second time thing? I, 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 it occurred to me after the stream that that might be a holdover problem from the one second time change. That the fires are lasting such ridiculously long times. So, at least the fire on me does. Um, but I never did get to stop dropping roll messages I remember previously either. So, I don't know. Yeah, I assume that. So we're going to go ahead and cast it. So I just wanted to get out of my vehicle just in case. So we'll cast it. Something clicked. We cast it. Uh, so finger fire lighter. 58 turns. This just basically um, acts like a, a lighter. Small flame you can hold in your hand with a thought. You can cause it to light something on fire. Disappears as soon as this timer runs out. Whether it is food or not. <laughs> Counts as fire for crafting purposes. Oh, I can craft with it. Hmm. Alright. Is it? Man, look at those turns go down all of a sudden. Alright, does it suffer the, from the same thing where the timer doesn't ever go out? Unless you're wielding it? Yeah. Alright, we'll see if it disappears. So it's sitting in my inventory right there. Oh. That's interesting. Because I have it in my inventory, it's giving me bright light. So you can read by the finger? Well, that wouldn't last very long for reading purposes. But I don't see it being useful for that part. Hey there, Soldadia. Right, let me back up and check chat real quick. I forgot to check chat after I got on my little... All these changes, uh... Scree that I went on there. So, howdy everybody in chat that has said hello. I'm not going to read everybody's name today. Starting to get a little bit too many of those guys. Um, Arctic Saint did some testing. Explosives like grenades and molotovs don't trigger morale penalties for pacifists and killing zombie kids. Alright, good to know. I don't usually care about the whole killing kids thing, but uh, the morale penalties for the other things can be an issue, depending on your character build. Howdy, Orange Cluster! Um, yeah, I told it. I, I tried to tell people the answer to this healing issue is to play fragile, glass jaw, six strength characters. There you go. No more healing problem. You'll only have 18 hit points. You'll have a full bar in no time. There you go. Your problems are all solved. No more healing issues. <laughs> Spontaneous combustion of ammo on your person? That'd be pretty fun. All right, well, we got the lit up effect, which is going to be, well, actually, no, this is a problem because if, yeah, this is a problem because now I have a light item that's permanent. I'm getting the finger firelight benefit for bright lighting. So, I mean, I can read, I can do whatever I need to do if that stays on permanently. So we need to make sure this thing goes away. Otherwise, it's free light forever. Um, so we'll see if that does disappear through some 
process, back when I started testing the uh, weapon summonings, those eventually did disappear, even though I wasn't using them. I don't know what triggered them to go away. Yeah, all right, we'll, we'll have to pay attention to that, because it's a, it's a use that is beyond the scope of its intent, I believe, um, to have that happening. All right, so, uh, yeah, no other changes that I remember from the skill or the spells. Uh, we haven't really done much with the spells yet. Burning Hands at level one, Finger Fire Lighter one, Fireball one. We haven't done Gravity Well yet on anything. Ice Spike, Pain Split, and Point Flare is only up to three. So we're only on day two, though. It's early, early times. So we had some other issues we had to get solved before we uh, sat down and started grinding out some spell levels. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. So if I try to drop the finger fire lighter. Yep. And it's it starts sequencing the turns again after that. So while it's while I have it in my hand, it uh, decrements the turn timer. While I have it on the ground, it decrements the turn timer. But if I just have it in my inventory, it does not. So... Same issue, but it's providing me the uh, the light status. So if I move into the dark here, bright light, drop under firelight. Now it's very dark. If I stand on it, it's shady. If I pick it back up again, it's bright light again. So, still need to figure out why those things aren't decrementing their timers, and well, unless you already have figured out, and it's just some other thing that has to get fixed by somebody else. Uh, but yeah, so we have the finger fire lighter. Um, what else were we working with? So we've got the M27 and a decent amount of ammo for it. We've got the bat for backup. I remember I had just come back up out of the lab. We had been running around on level two or three. We just finished clearing a barracks and looking around a few places. We got all of our tools. So day two, we've got the hacksaw, we've got the wrench, we've got the screwdriver set and a makeshift hammer. We'll eventually pick up a full hammer, but that'll do for now. Plus the jackhammer, getting us into the various storages. We have soldering iron and I believe I'm, I'm I'm mixing up some of the gear from the various attempts we've made on this one. Uh, I think I've got... Let's see. Soldering iron. Maybe not. There's the mana crystal we found. Thought I had uh, acetylene torch, but maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong one. All right. But we've got, uh, we've built up a decent supply of minor food items like I have recently, so we're okay with food for a few days at a minimum. Um, we got our washing machine. I remember I threw some meat. We've got our fat, our meat, and our lunch meat in the refrigerator, and I turned on the vehicle uh, refrigerator, so I'm going to keep an eye on this number, see if it, uh, yeah, it'll tell me. Uh, battery. Yeah, we're, we're still ahead. So, we're, we're okay. We've got the refrigerator on and we're still gaining charge. During the daytime hours, it'll, it'll go negative at night when the solar panels aren't charging. But, um, we'll see what the overall effect is. Alright, uh, back to this list. So, as you can see, we got some stuff that got, uh, ripped up pretty good. We had a few not-too-fun encounters. Um... Got army pants and all that good stuff. Let's. I'm just going to toss these down here for now. Pick up some more when we head back down into the lab. So, gun, bat, combat knife, and a sheath. Um, 30 volume. Some of which is this makeshift sling I need to get rid of. Oh yeah, army pants, jeans, cargo shorts. All right, we got we got too much crazy crap on. Um, get rid of, get rid of, get rid of.
Yeah, we got basically nothing else in here. So let's keep an eye out for gear from zombies. Uh, I need some more backpacks and stuff. And I have no skill, so I can't just whip up a, uh, a backpack or a duffel bag without putting a bit of effort into the process. And I'd rather not if I can manage it. Um, I don't plan on picking up all that much stuff, so I think I'm just going to go with the uh, 27 volume. That get our encumbrance at. We're still at 72, we're at what, 82, 89 encumbrance. Backpack, sling, jacket, jacket. Yeah, that's that's a bit. Good old makeshift sling, 40 encumbrance. Um, yarg. Hmm. I think that's going to be one place I have a problem is uh, keeping enough uh, just general. Uh, volume without uh, crafting duffel bags and such. We'll see what we can do. Uh, we'll keep it for the moment. I'm not too worried about the encumbrance. One thing that does occur to me, though, is because I don't care about encumbrance, I could pretty brutally fiddle with this. Let's say I don't want to lose my backpack. Let's move it to the top. Now it's the innermost, most protected spot. Yes, it raises my torso encumbrance, but I don't care about my torso encumbrance. Hey, missile. Hey, sling. Move you up here. <laughs> um, it's fine. All right. So, do we head back in, or do we do some skilling up while we've got uh, got the light? What else do I want to leave? Leave. Uh, how much space do I have? Four out of twenty in the table. To do keep the drugs. I need to take that in with me. All right, pretty much everything else I need to take with me. So that leaves me not quite ten liters. But uh, again, I can't think of too many things I'm going to go picking up while I'm down there. So food items, maybe. Um, Really, I need to spend some time getting my spell stuff done, but I also want to see how deep this lab is so I get a feel for how long we're going to be here. So let's pop back in, remind myself of the layout here. Try not to get killed. So if I have this light with me, <laughs> it's going to be a bit of a problem. Um, light is death. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to ditch the light and let it go out for now. We'll, we'll summon another one later. All right, what do I got sitting here? I got Storm Scar and Sig. Get more ammo. Tongs. Welding goggles. More food items. All right, nothing too exciting. And we've got, we keep finding heavy batteries. I can't find light and medium batteries this time. I'm finding heavy batteries. Yeah, torso encumbrance, melee attack rolls, I'm not doing any melee attacks. Dodge, I'm not dodging anything. I'm not going swimming. I'm not doing melee or thrown attacks. So, it's a consequence of the mechanics and the systems. Once you understand what does what, with magic and guns, I could care less about my torso encumbrance. So, I don't care if that jumps up to the top. That's why I can uh, do silly things like moving my backpack and my sling to the innermost layer. I couldn't tell you if it affects grabs. You'll have to have somebody go check the code for the grab uh, formulas. I don't have any idea if it affects that or not. It'd be interesting if it does. I definitely reevaluate. But uh, the times I was having grab problems on Monday, I wasn't having this. I didn't have anywhere near this kind of torso encumbrance stuff going on. I'm more inc inclined to have an issue with my leg encumbrance than anything else. So, because. That is increasing my running cost and uh, lowering my non-existent dodge skill, but the running cost. So, uh, grab is based on the higher of strength or dex. So, in my case, they're the same unless I get some really weird negative condition that uh, drops one and not the other. But I, I know the escape from grabs, or at least I know the escape from grabbing is based on strength or dex. Whether the initial grab goes off, I I don't think I know what that uh, that one's based off of. But breaking a grab is based on the higher of strength or dex. 
right. Uh, so, got rid of the light. Um, I am going to drop the books here again. Not going to do any learning while we're down and around there. We are carrying the jackhammer. That's a large part of my weight and uh, volume. So, here's the level. I think, if I remember right, we were done with this level. We had uh, three prisoner containments, which I could care less about getting into. That's all we found on this top floor, was three prisoner containments. Then we have a turret sitting in the middle of the hallway here. And we have gas in this room. And I determined I wasn't going to bother with those for now. We were just going to go down, down, down. Which is what we started to do. Hey there, Deadly Cube. Uh, so, let's do the same path. If I remember right, I was going down to... I was using the downstairs here to get to that uh, barracks, but I don't remember if... I was done with the barracks. So there's the barracks. We're all done there. I don't remember what else was down here. So we definitely haven't finished the level. Um... That was prisoner containment that had been opened up by a Skell Jug, who's still wandering around over here. But there was nowhere else to go except for north, and I had a place to go there. Nothing here. Doors there. All right, so we're basically either diving to the bottom, which I really think I would prefer to do right now. So we got stairs right here. I still think this is funny. Stair up, stair down. Stair up, stair down. <laughs> That still amuses me. Let's peek it. Oh, look at that. Right into another barracks slash library slash uh, prisoner containment. Better not be another damn prisoner containment. All right, let's pop down. Prisoner containment. I think I'd already looked at that one before. I remember grumbling about how I just... Couldn't get any luck. It was just prisoner containment after prisoner containment, which is the most useless of the uh, specialty adjoining buildings. All right, that's the stairs for that other one that we saw just above us a second ago. I've already checked most of that, and apparently we peeked down that one previously as well. All right, but we know we're on an outside edge of the, the map here, so... Go ahead and uh, get moving. Don't like light. So, still stuck with the uh, two night vision range. <laughs> Apparently, I think what's happened is they now consider the space you're in to be one of the three points. It's, it feels like what's happening. So essentially, you've got your own space as one. Because I should have, per, per my perception, I should have three night vision range. Which in the past meant one, two, three. But it feels like this is now considered a space. So one, two, three. Because there's been occasions where I haven't been able to see anything around me at all, but I can see my space. And then I lost another point, and I couldn't even see myself. Even even my own character portrait disappeared. So, yeah. <laughs> I know there have been some changes to, uh, to the process and how it works, but that seems to be the essential effect. Oops. All right, nothing here. Don't don't accidentally teleport me again, please. <laughs> yeah, the the I do have uh, I do have a flashlight now, so I should be flashing that off and on just to get a look at the corridors and not have to run around to each potential spot. Time to hotkey that thing as much as I'm going to have to be hitting it. Come on, duct tape. Alright, so useless area, no way south. We're going to keep following the walls here. Uh, more possible loot. There's up. I'm going to take any downstairs that I find. Don't need... That's likely to be going towards another barracks or uh, prisoner containment. No way to go east. 
Another battery. Heavy? <laughs> Come on. Uh, I'm going to have to get my... I'm going to have to purposely grind up my electronic skill just so I can make battery mods. So I can put heavy batteries in my light battery tools. That's all they keep giving me. All right, we do have a way north. So let's go check, see if this is a barracks slash prisoner containment. It is. Big surprise. And I am so sick of these prisoner containments. Damn, that's five of them in the first two floors. They're totally useless for me. Unless I've really got a need for uh, scientist zombies, which they're okay, but that's not what I need right now, so I'm getting kind of irritated. Damn, map gen just keeps giving me the finger. And another apartment area. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wizarding guide to backpacking. <laughs> uh, I'll take it. So, we got a spell book and a uh, bedroom area. The apartment area. Somebody's bouncing around out there. Ooh, vegetable pies. Vegetable pizzas, I think. Yep. Zambies! All right, Zambies. Um, I don't really have anything leveled up yet. I really do want to avoid taking melee damage. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, that's not good. Might have to get the rifle out. Whoa! Well, hey there, little running symbol. Hmm. I don't know. That, that, that... <laughs> I understand why it's there, but I don't know. That seems like an awful big indicator. It's hard to ignore. I'll give him that. I, I just feel like there would be a better way of doing this. Having this big running man symbol right over with my head. It, it's hard. Like I said, you can't ignore it, but it just looks a little silly to me. I'd rather have an interface thing over here like have this be turn red and blink <laughs> or something i'd rather have that than have this big old cartoon figure sitting over top of my head huh so yeah there is a crouch one as well so crouch run crouch run hmm All right, let's go to run mode. Oh, I want to do this. I mean, we've already got audio indicators for when your stamina drops. I don't know. That, that, that big cartoon symbols just feel it's too much. It's too distracting, I guess. You definitely won't forget which mode you're in, or you won't have an excuse to forget what mode you're in, but that, that just feels like too much in that direction. You're, once again, they're, they're coddling a little too much, but whatever. We'll deal with it. Um, I think I will shoot these guys. Quite a few of them. Alright, I took more shots than I was hoping. Game system with battery, yay. Take that.
<laughs> God dang it. I'm getting blinded a lot lately, too. Alright. No more getting surprised, please. Walk mode, safe mode. There's still zombies out here? There's a lot more zombies than I usually see in these kitchen areas. Teas, flour will take. Alright, that's it for this side. Come on, grab. Useful there. I'm not a fan of using two rounds on little ones. Paladin's Guide to Modern Spellcasting? Off a zombie? That'll definitely be the first spell book I've found off of a creature drop. Hmm. Well, I'll definitely take it. And another zombie. God, that's what? Five, six, six, seven? Mop to clean up my mess. No way north. I hit the max here pretty soon. And another spell book. Same one. Um, so three spell books we got in a single residential area. Wizarding Guide to Backpacking and two copies of the Paladin's Guide. Seems a little little much. I mean, maybe that's just really luck of the draw. Uh, we got uh, one way out of here. 21 out of 27. 97 out of 99. Let's these stairs first. Alright, we already haven't been to. I'm not going there right now then. This is where I left the uh, skull juggernaut. Yeah, I don't want to mess with him. All right, this is where I came down right here. All right, let's uh, drop some stuff. Check our spell list now. Holy Blade, Spiritual Armor, Technomancer. And, oops. Phase Door, Finger Fire Lighter, Pain Split we already got, and Aura of Protection. That one's Classless, Kelvinist, and Magus. Alright, so Kelvinist and Magus we've already got, so those are fine. And then I think I'm. Aren't I locked out of Technomancer? Evil will not make it through your defenses if your faith is strong enough. Animist. 
Hmm. All right. Um. The duration goes up with the uh, level. Yes, another one where I, I can't really make sense of the, the grid. 20 levels. Start at 3,000 duration. Gain 3,000 per level, but it caps at 9,000. Hi. <laughs> Uh, does that mean it's going to cap at level 3? Or is it getting capped at level 2? You're going to 0 to 1, so if you get 3,000 at 1 and then 3,000 at 2, are you already at the max? Or is this actually buried in between all these levels? Like at level 5 and 10? Or I, I don't know. I do like the idea of spiritual armor, though. Oh, that's another item. Uh, increases success chance, yeah. All right. So, do we go with Technomancer? Um, I don't know the balance of spells or the list of spells at this point. We're definitely going to do phase door right now. And we'll do... That one's classless, so let's go ahead and get that one done. Yeah, I know they're not all equal in their content right now. And I'm not actually all that concerned about some of these extra classes. I'm really focusing on the Pyromancer Kelvinist. So the rest of this stuff, if I get to use it, great. I'll uh, I'll return to it for future playthroughs to kind of put a focus on them. Right now, I'm just kind of using everything I get a hold of. Um, and I don't know if any of the other ones are going to provide whatever this armor does. I think I'm going to go ahead and do these. This will take a while. All right. It's going to lock me out of Earth Shaper. All right. That's fine. Okay. We are done learning new types. Biomancer, Kelvinist, Magus, Technomancer. We're locked into our four classes. We can't learn any of the new classes. So whatever spells we get, we get. Okay, which ones can I cast right now? Put that away, and I need a target for that. That I can do now. Alright, so we got a Holy Blade. Gave us a Longsword. I'll take it. 38 cut, 10 bash, plus 1 to hit. High blocking ability. All right, and then, oh, that's right. I can't cast spells with it in my hands. All right, uh, phase door, phase door. All right, so we got phase door to level one. And aura of protection, 375, do it. Failed. All right, something about the spell worked. You gained a level. Your wounds are closing up. Really? It's a healing spell? You're protected by an energy field times 11. Whoa. Ah. Ah. <laughs> uh, I have effect spam. Gorg, there's effect spam. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, that's 11 of them, all right. <laughs> What, what does it actually mean? Hmm. Yeah, he wandered in earlier. He wandered back out again. That's fine. He'll, he'll fast forward through the... Uh, fast forward through this playthrough later. 
Uh, but what else is going on? Did I gain... So it said my wounds are, he are closing up. So we got a little bit of healing, apparently. I don't know. It will encases your whole body in a magical aura that protects you from the environment. Hmm. All right. Ooh, 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 we'll take it. Spiritual armor. Let's see what we get out of that. Failed it. There we go. Uh... Plate armor. Hey there, plate armor. Torso, arms, and legs. Plate armor. 16, 16 for 10 encumbrance fitted. So it's magical gothic plate armor. Wonder if I can actually disassemble this magic piece of gothic plate armor and if the pieces I disassemble turn into the real things that I can keep. <laughs> um that would be entertaining. Let's let's find out. It disappeared. <laughs> Bad disassembly activity values. <laughs> Alright. Let me make a note of that one. Uh note for Korg. <laughs> Uh, what's that one called again? Spiritual armor. That's one of the main reasons we're doing this playthrough, finding these kinds of things and uh, getting reported, so. All right, where are we at? Uh, let's go ahead and leave the new spell books. We've read the ones we can read. I'm not gonna go into a bunch of uh, spell learning currently. I'm down to nine out of 30. Reload. Yeah, let's just swap mags. All right, 30 out of 30. Still got the long sword, which I could switch to. Because the timer's not going down. <laughs> hey there, Korg. <laughs> uh, I tried to disassemble your spiritual armor. <laughs> to see if I could get the components. And it popped up an error message on me. And then uh, we tried the Aurora, or the, uh, <laughs> we tried the uh, Spiritual Armor, and, or no, the Aura of Protection. And it says here, you're predicted by an energy field times 11, which is, uh, does it, does it have to do this? <laughs> I mean, that's 11 entries. And what is it actually doing? I mean, it just doesn't really tell me anything. Says you're protected by an energy field. Well, that's nice, but what does that mean? Is is each one of these like one point of protection, or gives you environmental protection on those limbs? I don't have eleven limbs. Do I have eleven limbs? Maybe I do if you count hands and feet and all that kind of stuff. Nine, ten, nine, ten. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> However, just looks a little weird, and you can't really tell from either the spell book or from this what it's actually doing. Um, 
I mean, is environmental protection, acid protection, shock protection, that kind of stuff? I know acid is its own value. But yeah, I mean, I, I can't tell. Plus, it gives me a message that my wounds are closing up. So there seems to be a minor heal baked into it as well. I mean, I see the protection you from the environment. And I could guess generally what kind of thing it was going to protect me from, or for. But, um, yeah. All right, uh, let's get moving again. So we found uh, three magic books in one uh, apartment complex area, Korg. Two copies of the Paladin book and uh, one of the Backpacker book. Head back in. We're probably going to be getting tired here pretty soon. Let's uh, get an aspirin in our system. I keep using the same path. So down we go, down we go. And we know we're done on this outside edge up to here. I think I'm going to go west this time. If we can go west. Let's... And another apartment area I've lit up. Um... Alright, let's... See, I don't want to be doing melee because of all of the uh, torso encumbrance I've got going on, so the sword isn't going to help. Can't remember. Can I do uh, point flare through windows? Eh, don't need to worry about it. 